Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of HR Katha Presents Happiness at Work, powered by happiness.me. I hope you all liked the previous episodes. If you liked it, please, please press the bell icon and follow our channel. As many of you know, Happiness at Work is a video knowledge series where we talk about different facets of employee happiness. In today's episode, we have Shaila Singh as our eminent guest. Many of you would not know that Shailesh was a civil service aspirant, but he soon realized that being a government official was never on the cards. He joined IRMA, Institute of Rural Management, Anand, and that's where his journey to the corporate world started. But today, we are not here to talk about Shailesh's professional journey, but to understand his belief on happiness and what it takes to keep employees in an insurance company a happy lot. Shalish, welcome to the show. Thank you, Prajan. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a real delight, particularly because um, um, I'm here to interact on a topic that's very dear to me. Uh, so looking forward to this interaction today. Yeah. Thank you for you know taking your time to be on the show. To begin with, how do you define happiness? You know, personally, what makes you happy? You know, there could be certain things, incidents, events that gives you immense happiness. You know, happiness to me, Prajal, in its simplest form, uh, is a state of being yourself. You know, when you are at peace, when you are in harmony, and therefore, you know, you tend to lower your guard and return to simple forms that you believe in. Um, and those could be some very core beliefs, core principles that you that you believe in. Uh, there is a very powerful paradigm shift that I have noticed, you know, Brazil, and I must call that out right at the outset. You know, from the generation of our parents to perhaps even my generation, a lot of us have really seen happiness as a destination, and oftentimes it has been elusive. There has been this temptation to push it forward you know, with passage of time and then realize and find that you, you are behind and you are late uh, versus today where it is more about happiness in the moment. You know, happiness of today, happiness at this moment as we live, which is a great shift that I'm, I'm happy to see people observe, realize and hopefully practice in times to come. Not everyone gets this fine difference, but great to see many people you know, moving in, 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 that, in that direction. So I am a personally a, a believer in, in this model of uh, happiness, which has a longer term dimension, as well as a you know, short, -term, uh, short term dimension. And it is of course about living a, a certain purpose, living certain principles. Uh, personally, I have some very strong principles and purpose that I believe in. We'll talk to you about that later in the, in the, in the interaction, you know, as it unfolds. Uh, but yes, that is what happiness is to me. So, so you mean to say that, you know, happiness, you know, the way people define happiness has changed from long-term goals to short-term goals. Is, is that what or the new generation has brought in this change? Yeah, that is one, you're right. That is one frame where it is more, you know, short-term goals. Um, there is also this desire to live in the moment. Yeah. Be in the moment. Uh, um, which I think, you know, uh, goes very well with concepts like mindfulness, you know, so, you know, your ability to be here and now, be present, be mindful, connect and relate to this moment and not necessarily push your happiness to a later part of life is a part of this new model that seems to be emerging, which is very deep and very profound. Personally, I find it extremely powerful present. Do, do you, you know, would you separate uh, personal happiness with, uh, you know, professional happiness? Do you think those two can be integrated together or, those, I think, you know, both need no, to be kept at par? I, I, right? think, <laughs> I, I think they are, they are completely integral to each other. Okay. Um, it is very difficult for me to think of these two as two different compartments. The basic model stays the same because the individual is the same. And there are certain core beliefs, principles, uh, values, and a purpose uh, or purposes that a person lives with and lives for. 
and those can't be separated into two compartments of a personal life and profession now if i say ask you uh, what keeps the employees of max life happy you know do you have a global happiness agenda that you follow in india or there is one tailor made only for india because you know uh, india has its own unique uh, cultural context you know we indians become happy at for different reasons probably that's not followed globally uh, <laughs> you know prajal this is such a uh, subjective topic uh, the element of happiness can be extremely subjective you know depending yeah. on your life stage career stage uh, it can vary from you know person to person and therefore we are also an organization that frankly uh, very strongly believes in diversity and inclusion so in that spirit of you know inclusiveness and also practicing diversity we have no desire really to prescribe one formula for happiness i have absolutely no desire to script of yeah, I agree. but along side price does not fit out yeah yeah correct but along and therefore mindful of this reality ground reality what we do i, I will respond to your question now what we do however is you know we do try to create an environment where people are living their own lives they are not necessarily so when i come to workplace i carry a persona of shalish singh which i i am at home and i carry to work as well and our effort at the workplace is to minimize the dissonance between the two you know is to provide enough room for people to be themselves for people to be able to practice their beliefs and their purpose and lower their guards and be themselves i think they reach a stage of as i said earlier stage of harmony and peace and that's what in a joy and happiness is about therefore i i think it's difficult and perhaps not recommended to think of uh, you know separating this into two compartments the two are completely integral to each other personal and 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 professional and the better the synergy the superior the synergy between the two and the overlap the more peace and harmony people will experience and the workplace will experience the same as well i'll give you an example you know and um, you know for example even in this covid times where uh, clearly the digital fatigue can get to you between covid 1 and covid 2 you know, as we thought you know the dust had settled on covid and we had come out of it then we find you know suddenly there is a storm and in the midst of that you know it was important for us to let people be themselves you know how do we achieve that because there is this desire to not allow business to fall you know and incidentally i must mention here you know that this year the, the year that we just closed financial year yeah you know has been our best year ever has been our best it is a record year best year ever and it's a testimony to you know what culture can do power of culture and what when we create a joyful workplace and people devote their heart when they trust their leaders and when they rally even in some very trying times what magic this can create is very evident you know from this so in all of this period between covid 1 and 2 you know prajal what we have been doing and this is our sort of you know preferred model practiced model we go back to people you know and one big difference that i often call out between a, a, a company that's a great place to work and not necessarily a great place to work and i don't necessarily mean ranks or any issue but in spirit Yeah. is that a great place to work looks for solutions in culture a lot of our solutions business customers people we go for solutions to to culture and a lot of other workplaces go to tools processes projects and both are important but we our intuitive fix that we look for is in culture because that is systemic and it involves people so in this this period of covid 1 and covid 2 you know we we reached out to our people like we do every time the ceo will get on a on a webcast all india with the leadership team and in, in interact with them and ask them how things are and share you know what's latest you know for example when on the uh, in the april cycle last year not this year last year you know we were revisiting you know we were going through a very tough time lockdown should there be increases not increases bonuses policy should we review we were amongst the first ones to go to to our employees and ask them as to what do they feel and share with them some tough calls that we were making and everyone understood 
we were hiding nothing we were not waiting for anything to be approved by the board we went to our people first we connected with our people first and talked to them and then we came back and then we have been having a regular pulse surveys because we asked them you know how things are which are the biggest issues there and to the questions that they respond need attention and obviously like many companies we instituted a uh, wednesday's lights off 5:30 no meetings after that no supervisor digital for i wanted to ask you about what is this wednesday's lights off you know uh, what what is this you know so you know so we earlier had when we were you know working out of formal you know workplaces we had uh, every alternate wednesday uh, 5:30 pm we used to you know tell people to switch off and go home every or you know alternate day sometimes we would even ask the guard he will go around you know with a glass in hand and banging it around for people to say it's time to lock and go um, we made this weekly here every wednesday we said in this time it's important because people said some supervisors were getting over zealous in some pockets to achieve numbers and we were clearly pushing people to the edge and we said okay so let's frame some policies we heard our people when they told us in the pulse survey similarly we said 1 to 2 will be a lunch hour or family hour again no meetings you know in that period and then of course we created a lot more of interactive events you know we wanted to be amongst our people so while there was digital fatigue but digital is also a great medium to connect instantly and with a large number of people so we capitalized that the ceo i was there the other cxo the senior leadership team we were in the midst of our people in some very informal setups you know um, you know some songs and 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 dances and household chores and what you were doing and not doing and you know what you're growing in your garden and what your family is and we involved families so we extended families we involved them all in this all of that to me is you know very integral to building trust and any happy workplace is important it is engaging and it is trusting we were so you know allowing people to loosen up listening to them and when they engage and interact reciprocate trust so that they can be themselves and not necessarily start scripting policies and and rules and principles for them rather than be open to scrutiny and engaging and co-creating a work environment which everyone feels has contributed to and has a say in is extremely powerful to creating a happy workplace and that's exactly what we have been doing so every, very regularly every month we have been doing pulse surveys and whatever people tell us you know we respond back to them as a leadership team in terms of a change of our policy or practice there are a whole lot of you know practices that you know i can share with you subsequent to this or a team you know in terms of you know how we said you know for leave for example we said none of our employees will be on leave without pay for any covid sickness reason doesn't matter whether he has a leave balance or not no one will be allowed to be on leave without pay you know for example we said no one will be out of pocket on insurance claims uh, you know we will take care of that there will be no copay which normally applies to you know any insurance claim you know a certain percent and we moved away with that for all employees that are you know five years or more in the organization in any case we had made sick leave is unlimited unlimited and even in covid 1 or covid 2 we have ensured that we don't expose our people um, you know to to covid unnecessarily so necessary precautions have to be taken including we put cameras and we monitor and if there are people without masks in certain offices they and their supervisor supervisors are counseled as an example so we've used you know technology but essentially for letting people be themselves and not be you know pushed to living a life of your supervisor or living a life of a corporate that you are not necessarily comfortable with so you know there is a there is a broad frame but within that there is enough flexibility for people to live their lives you know as they would want so you mean small gestures you know matter a lot you know you can have an uh, happiness agenda in place but it it is the uh, you know the small gestures like you know your md talking to people in an informal environment you know these things matter a lot in in bringing yeah. smiles and happiness in people's completely agree completely agree present you know on a on a everyday basis for me when i come to office as an employee yeah. there is a moment of truth in every experience that i have in the workplace the moment of truth 
the company may claim you know a whole lot of things but if my supervisor doesn't behave well with me and there's no one to hear me that's a moment of truth for me yeah. you know if my expense claims get derailed you know and delayed for no reason and uh, and unjustifiably that's a moment of truth for me when i go to the cafeteria and get some hygienic nicely you know served food and my supervisor talks to me very nicely and takes care of me and knows my personal professional requirements that's the moment of truth for me so there are moments of truth and each of these together builds this experience which is called employee experience overall you know your digital and to us one of the main anchors of this who represents the enterprise is supervisor so yeah. in max life we have practiced this for over a decade where we work through the supervisor we don't do not necessarily look to hr you know hr as a function is a great partner in terms of bringing best practices and being a facilitator but we really work through the supervisor because we believe that the supervisor is closest to the employee all supervisors we strictly urge them insist that they are people managers first then they are a functional leader or a compliance leader or a finance leader or whatever function they belong to people leaders first and we and uh, i mean we are grateful to our team of supervisors and people the spirit with which they live this is just mind boggling and the power of this is you know this is infectious this is infectious it just builds one person trains the other and this chain you know uh, you know continues so little experiences working through the supervisor they are absolutely you know uh, powerful and then of course there is a bigger culture which is more long term and third is engagement are people engaged on a regular basis and communication has to be of of a inspiring order has to be of the highest order to let people know why we are doing this any activity any project you know our ceo will will get up on a on a platform and talk to them i will get up the other cxos will get up we take people into confidence we co create we don't want to shove things you know down people's throat and tell them that this is how you should be we avoid doing that we co create with them and which means sometimes decision making can take a little longer but we understand that this is inherent in the model that we practice but it sustains after that the joy continues uh, and the place you know continues to be happier than before so there is deep belief in this model you know wo wo chal chal ki umr khushi se kate teri aur wo kaam kar ke yaad tumhe sab kiya kare jo zikr ho tera to ho zikr e khair hi aur naam tera le to adab se liya kare so that's the spirit with which you know we have worked during this period and max life that's how we have always worked you know prajal we we would always uh, uh, you know try and and take care of our people raise the bar from a you know health and you know wellness perspective so we we like you said we did go through a very trying time after covid one i think you know while we had already before the government announced the lockdown we had already you know announced the the uh, the the closure of offices and people working from home so we had already done that Uh, but in spite of that i think you know we had never imagined the intensity of what was coming our way so for a few days we did have a feeling of helplessness but you know the power of culture you know we get our act together you know very quickly so you know you know from enabling people digitally getting the digital assets to their homes equipping them you know fully setting up rhythms and more importantly being with them in that hour of need whether after covid 1 or covid 2 so we we anyway had a you know we have a you know aside from health insurance we have a medical help desk through doctor insta but in covid 2 that was grossly insufficient you know the call for hospital beds the call for you know oxygen cylinders concentrators uh, challenged us so we went ahead and we we bought a large number of you know concentrators first for our employees for our age also created whatsapp groups who could you know verify leads and uh, help people uh, get cylinders you know on a quick basis dedicated to max life you know from morning till late in the evening so a panel of doctors was also 
uh, available for our for our people. So on all the fronts, whether it was buying concentrators with speed, you know, whether it was arranging cylinders, you know, you just needed to call a central help desk, which was sitting to take calls from our employees and their families. And there would be cabs waiting in different parts of NCR and other locations. You know, they would quickly sort of take a, a, a lot of effort and power uh, deploying culture. So a lot, lot of lot of org supported, enterprise supported initiatives in this period uh, to to help people. I mean, I still remember you know one situation very vividly, where in the initial you know after the COVID two situation, where one of our employees, yeah, senior you know employees actually. Uh, was detected with COVID and situation was deteriorating. Uh, he needed oxygen support. And obviously we all made some calls and we managed through some contact to get him the hospital bed. By the time we got him to the hospital, to the hospital with great difficulty because there was a long queue there, but we managed. And his supervisor was with him in all this, you know, with him, you know, with the mask and all put necessary, you know, care, but was with him, you know, in this hour. Uh, and, uh, uh, but as we did that, we, we, we realized and found that his wife, you know, uh, also uh, was infected with COVID and they had a young child. So, I mean, we had this and, and, and she also needed oxygen support. So this whole situation of what do we do where the husband is already hospitalized and yeah. the wife needs to be taken to another hospital. Actually, yeah, during that time. And the wife needs to be taken to a hospital and there's a young child in the house. And, but we managed to, you know, we, we went to the extended family and got the extended family to come in and take the child. And we took, you know, uh, the wife to another hospital, spouse to another hospital. And that's how we, we managed to, you know, get this sorted. And it took a few days and they both, you know, obviously uh, recovered, thankfully, and returned from the hospital um, and recovered at home and were united with the family. But, uh, but there are variety of cases that very testing times that we were put to. And in all situations, our people rose to the ask. The CEO himself was on the phone calling people who were COVID infected. And not one, but you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 people every day. And you have a spread across the country, you know. It's Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or, uh, you know, if you're in a manufacturing setup, you know. These many people are coming to the top floor or to the factory premises every yes. day. Yes. They are all located yes. in one place. But here you have got spread across, you know, each 300 plus, 300 plus locations, 300 plus locations. So we are a really retail organization, you know, yeah. uh, almost, uh, uh, you know, 15,000 employees plus 10,000 part time associates plus 40 to 50,000 agents. It's a large family. Uh, it's a very large family that we have. So it must be a mammoth task, you know, to manage, to, you know, provide or to cater to all of them across the country, you know. It's... Did you? Very big. Very big. And therefore, when we put a, a set of, a uh, 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 set of cross-functional team at the center, you know, from finance, from procurement, from HR, from leadership team, from crisis management team, risk team, all of those when they came together. That is how we leverage this power of cross-functional team. They were available and then there was a help desk. Anyone could call from anywhere in India and get help from there. Uh, and we also subsequently went on to build on, on this experience for vaccination. So, you know, once we had sort of, you know, we got the, uh, the hospitalization and related challenges behind us, then the next phase was vaccination, because how do we resume work, you know, without exposing people to, to COVID again? And therefore, vaccination, we started tracking, you know, first 45 plus years age people because they were being vaccinated first, then the 18 to 45. And by supervisor, by location, by channel, business channel, we were tracking. And our people, the central team was looking at where all vaccination slots were available. And, uh, you know, and quickly arranging to get people, you know, slots in different cities across India, rather than they struggling. And we were simultaneously from leadership team communicating to them that this is important for you. Please do not, you know, be misguided by anyone. Vaccination is important. We haven't seen any, you know, reactions or counter reactions to, you know, vaccination. So it's fairly safe. 
and we encourage people and we reached you know we are you know 80% plus now today in terms of you know vaccination vaccination level our goal is to get to 100% very quickly in the coming weeks uh, but again the power of of people rallying together people coming together with a sense of service i i think that was the was the hallmark was the strength that that we demonstrated in these times okay you know uh, many uh, most people are happiest when they do well you know so is happiness linked to professional success you know does that mean that happiness is very materialistic <laughs> um happiness uh, as i said is a very subjective uh, yeah. um, in the topic you know it can mean different things to um, you know different mm-hmm. different people yes so in some cases uh, especially early career early life it could well be what you just said yeah. you know material happiness uh, actually i'm reminded of another two lines beautiful lines uh, uh, where you know the poet says fitur hota hai har umr mein juda juda fitur hota hai har umr mein juda juda khilone mashuka rutba aur khuda so you know people everyone goes through a life cycle life cycle where you live and different things have different weight to you in your life yeah uh, and therefore in this frame also to your question i don't rule out that you know for a lot of people and and i'm so happy to see you know for example you know a lot of people get concerned about you know uh, attrition challenge an attrition challenge can be for variety of reasons if it is for because the organization is not able to retain and attract people i have an issue with that yeah. but if it is because people have a choice i don't mind i am so happy to see a prosperous india today this wasn't the case when our parents were of of our ages you know they didn't have that kind of a choice so material happiness i think is the foundation uh, you know for people to lift themselves to the next level of uh, uh, of life and their aspiration and then of course there are other things you know that uh, uh, whether you follow maslow's hierarchy which is you know you know modern model all of those have the basic hygiene and material and the as a foundation generally bfsi as a sector is considered to be a very serious sector you know unlike many many other sectors could be media could be you know marketing uh, so It, it, if it, when it has got very serious number oriented people the challenge to make them happy you know increases because the kind of professional or kind of person that they have you 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 personally have worked across you know sectors and companies you might have seen different kinds of profile or different segment of people or professionals no i agree I agree prajal you know i think it's a good point you make so i have worked in g for 17 18 years yeah. and i have worked for you know g capital i have worked for g energy you know g sourcing i have worked in dubai for 5 years and of course max life the last 10 years i have worked for aisha tractors um and i agree with you you know financial services really work on very thin margins yeah because you don't have the advantage of uh, your unique product unlike manufacturing and other sectors where you can ride that advantage for some time till someone copies that or makes it better financial services you know your products can get copied overnight you know and therefore we really operate on razor thin margins and therefore the game is played very differently it is very demanding there is absolutely no doubt and you know people who are a little slow paced etc could struggle a little however you know within that you know for max life you know the values that we practice organization values are caring collaboration customer obsession and growth mindset and for senior team there is a fifth value which is people leadership but i'm going to for the for the masses the four values that we we harp on we reinforce we talk about are caring collaboration customer obsession and growth mindset so caring and collaboration are big balancers they balance beautifully in these times where edge is needed sharpness is needed pace is needed faster delivery is needed and they can create extreme pressures you know sometimes in the financial services and even insurance is a fairly demanding sector you know while the potential for growth in insurance is huge 
because India has just seen three to four percent, you know, insurance penetration, unlike ten to twelve percent of the developed, you know, world. So the potential for growth is huge, but within that, the awareness is low, and therefore the pressures are high, and people don't understand many times the, you know, the the power of you know insurance, and therefore it's a it's a tough game in that sense, a tough business, you know, to be in. Uh, but what helps is what I just shared with you. Two values amongst the four: caring. You know, we exhort our people and leaders to be caring in all that they do, every time, every action. It's a constant reminder, and to collaborate with people. There's no point in winning if you are winning alone. Win together. Together we win. Is how we exhort our people to do that. Now those are nice. You know, with the values, when we sort of you know explain the how to it. Those are great balancers to people. Incidentally, we are amongst the few companies that, in the annual performance, measure their people on values. So when we measure them on goals, G, the second one is V, values. It's a two prong to arrive at a final rating for the year. So we insist how people have demonstrated values in the year is a, in an ingredient to their assessment at the end of the year. And of course, that determines their career and progression in the, in the, in the company. So there is a institutional response and a framework to encourage people to practice this on an ongoing basis, uh, which I think is a big, big coping mechanism. It's a big mitigant for people. Okay. No, in, in insurance, generally what happens is that, you know, within, you know, among colleagues, there is a lot of competitiveness, you know, who gets more business gets more incentives so sometimes uh, you know uh, this competitiveness could get little over the edge some people might be a little unhappy that they were little because there is a lot of competitiveness within the organization also you know it, it might not happen in other so suppose you are in a delivery business you know you know that each one is going to play its own role you know I am going to, it's like a relay race where, you know, you pass on the baton and somebody does it. But here, there, there is a lot of competitiveness within the organization, within the teams. Yeah, I, you know, uh, there is, but that's how we balance it. When we say while, so we call it, we sometimes could be seen living a life of contradiction, but we internally are clear we are not living a life of contradiction. Yeah. When we say uh, we encourage people to be in a state of constructive dissatisfaction, for example, constructive dissatisfaction, both are keywords here, you know, constructive as well as, you know, dissatisfaction. Yeah. So similarly, when we say while you win and while you compete, and we are all for being competitive, actually, frankly, we encourage, you know, competition and we encourage merit. But while doing that, you can't shed your values. You've got to be caring and you've got to be collaborative. Together we win and we don't want to be winning alone. So there are some of those uh, contours of how the game should be played that helps in balancing what and how we get to the destination that we want to get. Tell me something. You know, generally, people uh, say that the, the immediate boss or the manager is responsible for employee ethics. You know, uh, if he or she is happy, the employee will be happy. You know, it, it totally depends upon how. But I think, you know, the team also, the, the co-workers, the team members also play a significant role. You know, if I have got a very good colleagues, you know, in India, we tend to have Colleagues become, our, you know, they become our friends. They become family as well. You know, we, yeah. we develop a kind of, uh, we, we, a very different kind of bonding with our colleagues. You know, we go to office, you know, there is, uh, we go to each other's birthday parties, you know, family get togethers. They, they develop a relationship. It might not happen in, in many of the markets abroad, you know, where colleagues stay colleagues and not friends. Probably. Completely agree with you, you know, Prajal. It's a very fine point you make. And I, when I was serving in GE and I was in Dubai for five years, I had about 20 nationalities, uh, you know, working out of Dubai of, and for which I had HR responsibility. I was leading HR for GE Energy for Africa, India, and Middle East. And uh, I mean, it's a, I still admire GE a lot. It's a great company. 
but the kind of relationships that you just talked about yeah i see that in max life i see it in indian companies i haven't seen that as much in multinationals like ge for example who have their own unique strengths but this relationship at work is a is a is a very nice indian phenomenon where people are in uh, together uh, with each other in the trenches all the times they do not clinically connect and disconnect at workplace they don't do that clinically it's yeah. a heart to heart connect people go to each other's places families meet each other they come together sometimes at workplace as well in informal activities and while practicing some hobbies etc we have we had created you know some some groups where you know people practicing certain hobbies could come together it could be music it could be you know cooking and and so on but aside from that even otherwise people connect with each other a lot more the bonding that happens there heart to heart and i think that relationship is extremely important for the kind of happiness that we want to you know achieve at workplace so you make a very fine very fine fine and everyone has a role there we point it is not just supervisor down it is not top down everyone has a role you you understand hindi well right you know yes. prasad you do right so there is another one where another poet says ki har har shakhs ko jalana hoga apne hisse ka charag har shakhs ko jalana hoga apne hisse ka charag tab kahin jaakar zamane mein ujala hoga that is the power you know of everyone playing to this that's how the orchestra comes together the orchestra comes together it can't be each each to himself or herself together together this comes together and it's the power of that connect heart to heart which is integral to this model of happiness yeah so in india actually we have learned happiness in togetherness you know we can't i don't think we can uh, never stay alone in in india right. try to build relationship be it with our neighbors yeah. be it with our uh, you know colleagues be it there, there is always we don't address people by name you know we even if it is in our you know building mm-hmm. or a society or neighbors people would call chacha chachi mama mami whatever there is a relationship Absolutely. that we create probably that makes yes. india very unique and the same yes. thing we, we uh, you know uh, we follow it at our workplaces as well you know people Absolutely. don't are not so you know hardcore professional that they will not make friends or that they will not go beyond uh, you know does does this also have its you know some cons sometimes people are too friendly with somebody and that creates a rift you know that uh, what i mean to say you know it could create some kind of uh, lobbying rift groupism it could happen yeah and you know that is the again uh, yeah you're right that's a, again a fine fine balance to to apply yeah. uh, but it's a beautiful example you know that you you know alluded to i think you know people come in strangers uh but cultivate relationships and then those really last long beyond you know the tenure that has one that one has done in in, in organizations like max life i have always seen those they outlive after that they they continues to be a broader connect and framework that continues there could be some odd cases where you know uh, uh, familiarity could breed contempt uh not ruling that out you know too much of a familiarity in some situations could breed you no know, contempt but not really otherwise you know most cases i have only seen this benefiting the organization i mean we are a company with a heart and we believe our leaders and people to be people with a heart and it's important i mean the warm feelings that people have we we celebrate festivals uh, you know through the year you know all the festivals you know we celebrate you know from you know holi and diwali to eid to christmas uh, we decorate offices and all our people you know participate in in inter function you know inter small group teams and activities and there is joy and festivity in this this is part of our culture so it will look a little alien to really you know disengage or uh, discourage any of these um, and that, that's not how we work in in, in max life okay now you were talking about uh, you know uh, purpose how purpose leads to have happiness and that's been your uh, 
you know your motto in life also you know how you are driven through you know purpose you know for happiness yeah. you know if you if you talk about the younger generation uh, you know they are often blamed that you know they they generally have short term goals they look for short term happiness you know a weekend trip would make them happy you know or, or buying something would make them happy but i have also seen lot of younger generation you know people they they have they they can really fight for a cause you know they they are very passionate about a purpose you know and that makes them happy do, do you i agree i agree agree prajal because you know uh, the awareness levels in the millennial generation is a lot higher today than it used to be you know in our times at the same age thanks to you know digital thanks to media thanks to their own education levels Correct. all of them has helped so the awareness level is high the consciousness is high the desire to have a voice contribute push back you know all of those are high they are a lot more curious and questioning um and therefore their ability to connect to certain causes whether it is environment community etc i find it uh, a lot superior uh, than when i have seen you know 30 40 years back so i welcome it actually it's a it's a great evolution that one is seeing in in today's times okay so what, do you do something you know uh, specific for the younger generation you know to make them happier or to keep them engaged or uh... Uh, you know not necessarily for you know uh, by generation yeah. but for example we have you know variety of activities that happen you know during the year and uh, those could be on you know whether it is you know cultural you know celebrations or whether it is you know uh, interacting with you know the new campus hires that i would or the ceo would do um, or just doing some round tables from time to time to gauge what folks you know the younger folks are are feeling or to analyze our you know surveys that we do pulse surveys and employee annual surveys analyze them by cohorts by women by younger folks because sometimes their responses are quite stark and different from what some of the other tenured folks feel and perceive and it's important to differentiate discern that find that out and be able to you know respond to that so there are multiple ways of getting to you know pulse and get to know them and be able to craft policies in an environment which is you know cognizant of uh, of that variety and being able to embrace them in whatever we are doing so we ensure that they are not alienated or left out that's a very conscious model that we practice do you think pulse survey should be done more frequently I, i i believe you said you do it you guys do it every month you know in the covid times we were doing it uh, you know every month we have a tool uh, which is which we were using for pulse surveys and but any supervisor any leader can come in so there are topical engagement surveys that also that we do anything that we think for example is important and we want to get the voice of the people we use the tool and we can launch a survey so there are different surveys that happen during the time and uh, and uh, uh, anyone anyone can comments and you know get the output from the people the target audience the kind of inputs that they that they want so there is a platform for these purposes that people continue to from different functions practice and use okay so which gives an ongoing feedback you know because generally what oh, yes. i think you know pulse based service what happens is you know the company might have uh, done something good for me 3 months ago but yesterday i had a very nasty day at work you know my level of happiness will be low so i will rate it low you know this correct correct yes no i i agree i agree and it's important for us to know you yes. know the pulse of the organization the mood of the organization you know in as small granular form as possible to be able to do something about it uh, because you know otherwise this whole mission of joy and happiness remains incomplete if it just remains in policies and not necessarily felt by people experienced by people how, how do you you know my uh, you know do you think transparency brings in uh, uh, 
this belief that my employer, my company cares about me, that makes the employees happy? Do you think that increases the trust factor? Or what is that the companies should do? You know, how do they make the employees believe that, you know, we care for you? And I think, um, you know, actions speak louder than words all the time, yeah. uh, clearly. So I think while transparency certainly helps, but transparency with actions that build trust, okay. I think is a very powerful combination. Uh, so it's important that we are seen, we are visible first leadership team, um, supervisors. Second, that we are open to questioning and scrutiny. There are no sacred cows. People can challenge the status quo. Third, there is a continuous dialogue, communication and engagement that is on with them. And fourth, actions that follow to what we are hearing from the people, from the listening platforms and follow through that will build trust. And that's how then this becomes a reinforcing cycle on an ongoing basis. But it's important to be practicing that. Without that, it can remain a little sort of, you know, in the air and hollow. The arms and legs are what I just, you know, described to you. I think that's extremely important for any organization. Great. Great talking to you, uh, Shailesh. I enjoyed the conversation. And um, uh, the only thing, the only comment that I would perhaps share, the concluding comment that I would share is, this is a very deep profound subject that we were just you know interacting on and i'm so happy actually to see you touch upon and this becoming a topic of conversation increasingly around in this world yeah. and uh, because a lot of people and as i said especially older generation they've really not thought about this till very late in their life i agree you know and this is like saying jaha jago wahi savera you can make a beginning right here on so right. conversations like these are going to be powerful in embedding a superior realization of what life is about. It's going to at least prod people, push people, nudge them into reflecting and thinking deeper as to what is this life about versus clinically just living it, you know, from day to day, going to work and coming back and going to work and coming back without having thought about this deeper purpose that we talked and the, and the joy on the surface that this will create the outcome that will happen so that they can be in bliss, which is ultimately the, the goal and the outcome. And they feel at the end of their life that they have lived a fulfilling life and not an incomplete life that they didn't want to lead. And so I, it will be a lot more. I think COVID has changed a lot of perspective. Organizations Correct. which were only, you know, focused on business goal made employee happiness as their goal, you know. Because they, they believe that if, if employees are happy, if people are happy, you know, businesses can grow. I think people realize that or organizations specifically realize that during the COVID time, you know, I, I think personally, we all realize why health is important, why happiness is important, why, you know, security is important. A lot of things, you know, a lot of uh, things that yeah. we have to face to and we experience you know, it changed a lot of perspectives. And I think the way business is going to, you know, happen now is going to change. Do you think so? You know, business has so. undergone a change and it's going to change further. I, I, I think so. And uh, organizations that can, that can get this right will sustain success. Uh, organizations that miss out on this finer nuance and continue to push the pedal only on hard work and yeah. delivery of outcomes will struggle the cost to them in delivering on a sustained basis is going to be a lot more higher than the cost in the earlier model where there is joy and bliss and people connect from heart and they can deploy their discretionary effort to deliver to their end customers and create value. Completely agree on that. And I think, you know, the, the, the principles that were laid on do you, you know, from the industrial revolution days or IR days has changed due to COVID. You know, there has been a big shift due to COVID. Yes. Because Absolutely. earlier we always used to talk about productivity because that was the yes. manufacturing mindset, you know. Log aayenge, kaam karenge, kaam karna hai. You know, yeah. aa rahe hai kaam karne ke liye. Hum logo ke liye kya karenge? Matlab, you know, that, that's how people, organizations, have started thinking that people are their assets. Yeah, I agree with you completely, completely. That Great to see it happen.
that that probably has changed yes yes thank, thank you, you so much thank, thank you so much for your time i think i you know i hope you enjoyed the discussion today you know thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed thoroughly enjoyed and thank you for hosting this and hosting the series i think it's a great service to to all the professionals